everyone, I hope y'all are having a great day and today I'm bringing you a book review. Yes, I too forgot that I do that sometimes. Today I'm reviewing Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman. Surprise, surprise, it's not YA. It is, in fact, an adult fiction novel about a woman named Eleanor who lives an extremely mundane life. She wants so desperately to be normal after a childhood traumatic event that left half of her face scarred, but when she falls in love with a musician from afar, and also when she saves the life of an old man with the help of her fellow employee Raymond, her life begins to change and she starts to reconcile things that she's repressed for so long in order for her to actually be completely fine. I actually picked this book up when I was in Lisbon, Portugal. I was in the living room of the hostel that I was staying at and I was waiting for dinner to be ready. And the living room had a library, so I browsed the library and I found Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. And this is a book that I'd heard good things about before and I had it on my to read list on Goodreads and so I decided to take it out of the shelf and read it for a little bit. And during my total stay there, I only got about 30 pages in before I had to return the book and leave. So I got a copy when I came back to the States so that I could finish reading it. And here we are. I really thoroughly enjoyed this book. There was a time, maybe halfway into the book, where I suddenly fell into this reading groove and I could not put this book down. And it's not that the first half of this novel wasn't enjoyable, but there was just this time where I was in this mood near the middle where I did not want to be separated from this story if I could help it. This book isn't really for everyone, I don't think. Eleanor Oliphant is a very odd very strange character, and I don't think that it's unlikely that there might be readers out there who find her very off-putting by her sentiments and the way that she speaks. The writing is very stiff, very formal. Gail Honeyman infuses Eleanor with an extremely elaborate and formal vocabulary. For example, Eleanor uses the word comestibles instead of food, or micturate instead of urinate. Like, there are common terms that she has swapped out for elaborate alternates. And so I really learned a lot of new words while reading this book. Eleanor is extremely socially awkward due to her lack of human-on-human -human interaction, and so it does take some getting used to, to the tone and to her mindset. At first it might turn a reader off like it did to me because sometimes she is offensive, but then you understand that she never really learned these sets of rules, at least not in a social learning environment, but you do get to see her growth as the novel goes on. And once you get used to it, once you get used to her, Eleanor is actually really funny. I want to read you a few funny passages so that you can get a sense of the humor Humor, see whether whether you'd jive with it or not. In primary school, sports day was the one day of the year when the less academically gifted students could triumph, winning prizes for jumping fastest in a sack or running from point A to point B more quickly than their classmates. How they loved to wear those badges on their blazers the next day, as if a silver in the egg and spoon race was some sort of compensation for not understanding how to use an apostrophe. Or there's this one. I thought I'd found the perfect person for me, he said, staring at the back of the garden. Didn't work out, though. Why not, I said, although I could, in fact, think of many reasons why someone might not want to be with Raymond. And then this last one. During the next freeform jigging section, I started to wonder why the band was singing about presumably the Young Men's Christian Association. But then, from my very limited exposure to popular music, people did seem to sing about umbrellas and fire starting and Emily Bronte novels, so I suppose why not a gender and faith-based youth organization? Also, some of her descriptions of things are just so hilarious, and I grew to love seeing the world through Eleanor's eyes. Like, there's this description of a person. She wasn't actually chewing gum, but her demeanor was very much that of a gum chewer. Eleanor is just so offbeat, and gradually I found that to be very funny and endearing, but I can't guarantee that to every reader. The writing in this book is excellent. I found the characters to be so rich and vivid. The plot might not be the most exciting, but this book is definitely about development and growth, and that is, I think, what makes it so satisfying to read. There is a plot line involved in the book that's kind of uncovering the mystery of what happened to Eleanor as a child, and I thought that there were enough hints dropped throughout the novel that you can kind of piece together what happened, but there are still some surprises left for you at the end. Although sometimes the book does get pretty dark, I think for the most part the story just holds so much warmth and heart. Overall, I am so pleasantly surprised at how much I enjoyed Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. I mean, I'd heard good things about it since it was released, and like I said, I had it on my to-read list on Goodreads, but I never really envisioned myself picking it up, I guess. But I'm really glad I did, it was so worth it. It's such a bizarre and unusual but excellent book, 
and it's impressive especially considering it's the debut novel of the author and I'm so keen to see what else Gail Honeyman has cooking up in the future. Now I'm going to go into a quick spoiler section for Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine so if you haven't read this book and you don't wish to be spoiled I'd advise leaving in three, two, one, bye. Okie dokie, I just want to talk about a quick couple of things. First being the mystery of what happened to Eleanor as a child. So you quickly gather the fact that she was in a fire and that's why she has burn scars on her face. And as the book goes on you learn that she doesn't have siblings now but that she used to have a sister and you kind of piece together that her sister died in the fire. But what still shocked me at the end was that her mother was dead the entire time. I guess I never even considered that to be a possibility. The phone calls were written in a way that just felt so real, you know, because the mother would address other people supposedly in the environment or the institution that she was in. And she'd be like talking to other people and she'd talk about the fact that they, they chose to watch the same movie every week. And so those details made it feel like it was real and it never occurred to me that, that Eleanor could be imagining these phone calls with her dead mother. The section where Eleanor is dangerously intoxicated and on the verge of suicide was such a dark time and it was actually really, really scary to read. I was reading it late at night, in the dark, and it was honestly so much more terrifying to me than a typical horror story would be. Like, I felt so relieved when Raymond came in and rescued her. Raymond is such an angel. I loved him so much. He's an incredible person. Which brings me to Raymond and Eleanor's relationship. I loved how it was a beautiful platonic relationship between a man and a woman, but then as the novel went on, I was like, oh wait, is this turning romantic? <laughs> like Eleanor would really enjoy whenever Raymond would put a hand on her or she would really like when he embraced her and she would get jealous when she saw him and Laura together. So I was like maybe Eleanor is developing a genuine crush on him. I'm not sure if that's the direction Gail Honeyman intended to direct them towards beyond the end of the novel. I don't know, I loved their platonic relationship so much. But I guess I wouldn't be that mad if it turned romantic eventually. I don't know, what are your thoughts? Do you think Gail Honeyman was hinting that they were going to be an item later on in the road? Or are they just friends? And yeah, I think those are the only spoilery things that I wanted to mention. I really enjoyed this book, y'all. It was really quirky, and I usually hate the word quirky. I think it's very irritating and it always reminds me of Zoe Deschanel, whom I do not enjoy. But this book was quirky in a heartwarming way. I'm very glad I chose to read it. If you've read this book, please let me know your thoughts on it. I would love to to hear them. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you'll have a fantastic day and happy reading. Bye!